Hey everyone, welcome to Forbes Flash. I'm Natasha Lekwa and thanks for joining. Let's get started. And stick around because later we'll have Kathleen Schakowsky talking about what she saw in the courtroom this week when Mark Zuckerberg testified in front of Congress. This has been a rough week for a few Russian billionaires, whose fortunes suffered in the first day of trading, following the U.S. Treasury Department's announcement of sanctions against seven Russian oligarchs and the companies they control. The net worth of five of the seven sanctioned Russian billionaires fell a combined $4.2 billion between Friday morning and the close of trading on Monday. Hardest hit was Oleg Deripaska, whose net worth dropped 40%, or about $1.6 billion, since last Friday. Speaking of billionaires in politics, Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg took a field trip to Washington, D.C. this week to field questions about his company and data protection in a congressional hearing. During his first day of questioning, Facebook stock had its best day in two years, closing Tuesday up 4.5 percent. That means that while Zuckerberg was questioned by more than 40 U.S. senators, he also got a casual $2.8 billion richer. More on that hearing later. Here are a few stories you might have missed this past week. We announced our third annual ranking of the best value colleges in the U.S., hopefully helping upcoming grads and their families to make decisions surrounding the major costs that accompany some colleges. We score U.S. schools on net price, net debt, alumni earnings, timely graduation, school quality, and access for low-income students. At the top of the list is UCLA, which rose one spot from number two last year. Dropping down one slot is Berkeley. For all you history buffs out there, this discovery is right up your alley. One of the biggest mysteries surrounding Stonehenge may finally be solved. According to research published by an archaeologist this week, two of the giant stones were already in place for millions of years before people even arrived. For the longest time, humans have been fascinated with why that specific location was selected to erect the massive stone box. This may answer some of our questions, but this doesn't mean that the stone structures are any less awe-inspiring. Put Harry Potter into anything, and it's bound to perform well. And the latest play in the franchise is no exception. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, parts one and two, played its first week at Broadway's Lyric Theater and grossed a record-breaking $2.1 million. That makes it the biggest week for a play in all of Broadway history. <laughs> Tax day is next week, and whether or not you've filed yet, keep an eye out for scams targeting last-minute filers. For example, a new scam in Connecticut appears to be a tax bill for Amazon purchases, directing those who click to a fake website and potentially reveal personal and financial info. We'll be sharing advice on how to finish up your taxes last minute all weekend on our social platforms, so stay tuned. Want to be on the 30 under 30 list or know someone else who should be? Nominations are now open for the class of 2019. You have a few months to apply, but it can't hurt to get going now. Find the application and more details at the address below. The acting CEO of Cambridge Analytica stepped down Wednesday. Alexander Taylor had stepped up to take the spot left by Alexander Nix, but will return to his role as chief data officer. Nix was suspended in March as the story escalated that the political advisory firm siphoned data from more than 50 million Facebook users. It's now estimated that the number of users affected is closer to 76 million, including Mark Zuckerberg himself. Joining us now is Forbes tech reporter Kathleen Schakowsky to discuss Mark Zuckerberg's trip to Washington and what's next for Facebook amid data sharing drama. This week, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook CEO and co-founder, completed about 10 hours of congressional testimony on Capitol Hill. And this testimony was really the result of the recent Cambridge Analytica data scandal, in which it became publicly revealed last month that the political research firm that helped President Donald Trump get elected had improperly acquired the data of about 87 million Facebook users. So Zuckerberg went to Capitol Hill for two days of testimony. The first on Tuesday was about five hours with a joint Senate committee, and on Wednesday, five hours with a House committee. This appearance was really important for Zuckerberg and for Facebook because the company is truly facing a crisis of public trust. And without the trust of its user base and of advertisers who are spending marketing dollars across its suite of apps, Facebook's core business and longevity as a company is at risk. So Zuckerberg really needed to be there to show lawmakers that he 
cares about users' privacy, data, security, ensuring that Facebook can't be misused as a tool for nefarious activity like election meddling. So Zuckerberg needed to show up and say that this issue is a huge priority for him and lay out the steps that he and his executive team will be taking to bolster security on Facebook and prevent misuse in the future. By many measures, this testimony was a success for Zuckerberg and for Facebook. On Tuesday, looking at the stock price, the stock closed up about 4.5%, which translated into a $3 billion gain for Zuckerberg personally. On Wednesday, the stock closed up a little under 1%. What this really shows is that investors were reasonably assured by Zuckerberg's testimony. You know, he didn't melt under pressure at any point. He really pretty much remained cool during both days of testimony. He was a little uncomfortable at points, but that's really to be expected under the circumstances. So he held his own and he had a set of core messages that I think he successfully drove home from Facebook's perspective, laying out the steps of how Facebook is going back to apps that had similar access during that time period to see if there are other Cambridge Analytica type companies that are out there right now. Zuckerberg's information was actually part of the data breach. So he was one of the affected users, which is an interesting takeaway. And I think he really took this as an opportunity to present that he is really personally connected to the problems that Facebook is experiencing and that he himself feels responsible for what he has created and he's not pinning that responsibility on any other executives at the company. I think another important takeaway from the hearing is just that there really is a vast spectrum in how much understanding individuals have of how Facebook works as an app and as a collector of people's personal information. There is a lot of uncertainty as to where Facebook is gathering user information. You know, several lawmakers were addressing this question of does Facebook listen to users' conversation through microphones on their phone, which, you know, Facebook has called a conspiracy theory and is, is not the way that Facebook's app works. But it just goes to show that there's a lot of uncertainty around how uh, Facebook's data privacy and collection works and that this is a major sticking point for Facebook. And it really goes to show that Facebook does need to do a lot more to educate users about what type of information is being gathered on the app, how they can control how their information is being used, and that if users don't feel they have this understanding, they're not going to have a positive feeling about Facebook as a company and the app as a place to have a consumer experience. So education and clearer privacy tools really are points that Facebook will need to be focusing on moving forward. So the hearing really reflects that lawmakers are entering into a different phase of philosophy and perspective when it comes to what types of regulation internet companies should be facing. I think walking away from the hearings, Facebook isn't at risk of imminent regulation. It takes time for laws to be passed and developed, but it really does look like Facebook will likely be experiencing more regulation in the future. Zuckerberg seemed to anticipate this by really emphasizing that he thinks regulation is something that will happen and it's a question of what type and what's appropriate versus whether or not it should be happening in the first place. So I think Facebook is trying to get ahead of the regulation that will likely be coming and say we're on board to work as much as we can with lawmakers to make regulation as appropriate and healthy as possible for Facebook and also for younger players like startups that may not have the same resources as bigger internet companies. Thanks for joining us. Tweet us your feedback using hashtag Forbes Flash, and we'll see you next week. Tune in every Friday morning, same time, same place.